All right. Hey, everybody. I'm Andrew Marston for the Euchre Media YouTube channel, and today we're going to be automating animation using the waveform of an audio clip. First, we'll import some artwork from Illustrator. Then, we'll learn how to extract the audio waveform data so that we can use it to animate. Next, we'll write an expression that finds the maximum value of all the keyframes on a specific property, and we'll use this in a linear expression to create our animation. And lastly, we'll learn how to smooth out the waveform data to create better motion. All right, so let's dive into After Effects. Good, I think that's good. All right, so here we are in After Effects, and what we're gonna be doing is having this boom box automatically animate to the waveform of this audio file, like this. So a couple things to point out are that the speakers themselves, the circular speakers, get bigger and smaller as the waveform gets bigger and smaller. So to the blur on the background follows the waveform, and also these zigzag circle accents appear and disappear. All right, so let's go ahead and make this from scratch. The first thing we're going to need to do is import the artwork, which I have pre-prepared in Illustrator, separated into layers, we have uh, the right speaker and the left speaker and then the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the background in its entirety. You can see that's the background selected and then using Overlord, I'm gonna push that to After Effects. And it's also important to note that I don't have the split shapes to layers button checked. That is unchecked because we want this as all one big background layer, all these shapes. Perfect, so let's go back into Illustrator. We'll take the right speaker push that into After Effects, and then the left speaker, we'll push that into After Effects. And let's go ahead and hit Home, and then Alt, left bracket to make all of these layers line up to the beginning of our composition. And then I believe there was a background layer here. Yeah, you know, I'm just gonna go ahead and steal that. And then last but not least, oops, send that to the background, Control Shift, left bracket. Um, so I'm gonna actually rename this background as background. And this one is going to just be boombox. Perfect. I'm going to lock this. And then last, I believe we need to put the music in there, which I have all picked out. And let's go ahead and start that at half a second in. So I'm going to hold Alt and Shift, hit page down to nudge this layer 10 frames into the future. And then Alt, page down twice. So now we have moved it 12 frames into the future. All right, so let's go ahead and select our audio layer and tap LL on our keyboard to bring up the waveform. And now this data here is what we want all these other elements to be reacting to. So we need to find a way to extract this data in a way that we can use. And to do that, it's pretty simple. You just right click on the layer, go to Keyframe Assistant, and click Convert Audio to Keyframes. And you'll notice right away that After Effects has created a solid layer called Audio Amplitude, has three effects, a left channel, a right channel, and one effect called both channels. And if we look at those, I'm just gonna hit E on the keyboard to bring up the effects. And we'll just go ahead and toggle these. These have keyframes that correspond to the volume of the right channel, the left channel, and both channels from that audio track. One other important thing to note is that it only extracted the audio for the work area in the composition, not the whole composition. So if I wanted keyframes for this section of the audio track right out here, that's outside the work area, I would need to go ahead and extend that work area and then re-convert audio to keyframes. All right, so if we look at the graph editor for this both channels slider, we can see that the keyframes match the waveform of our audio channel. And this is perfect because now we can use this to affect the other elements of our animation. As with most expression rigs, there is a little setup involved. So I'm gonna create a new shape layer. I'm gonna rename it control, make it yellow so I know it's my control layer and make it a guide layer just to be safe. I'm gonna go ahead and add one, two, three sliders, which I'll explain as we go. I'm gonna call this first one max vol for max volume. And then this one's gonna be S min for scale minimum and S max for scale maximum. And I'll explain all these in just a second. Um, so then I'm gonna select both speakers and the control layer and hit S to bring up the scale properties. And then I'm going to pick whip the scale properties of the speakers to the scale property of the control layer. So now if we change the scale of the control layer, it affects the scale of the speakers. So our goal now is to make the keyframe values of this both channels slider control the scale 
of this control layer. But we can't just pick whip from the scale property to this slider because the values of the slider aren't appropriate for scale. When the volume is zero, we really want the scale to be 100. And we wanna be able to control how big the speakers get when the keyframes hit their maximum value. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this expression by hitting Alt and clicking on the stopwatch. And hitting E will pull up the effects we created before. And under max volume, I'm gonna Alt click on the stopwatch so we can create an expression that will tell us the maximum value for all the keyframes in this both channel slider. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a variable which I'll call source, say equals, and then pick whip to this both channel slider. So we're pulling the waveform data. And then I'm gonna create another variable called source max. I'm gonna set that equal to zero for now. Next, we're gonna create a for loop, which I'm just gonna write it out and then I'll explain it. I'm gonna say for open parentheses i equals one semicolon, and then our condition is if i is less than or equal to source.numkeys, semicolon, then i plus plus. Rerun the loop. Open bracket. And now what happens inside this loop? We're gonna say source max, our source max variable, equals math.max, oops, math.max, open parentheses, source max, comma, so we're comparing two numbers here, our source max variable and our source dot key, open parentheses, i, semicolon. And I believe the bracket's already there, yep. And then at the end, we want source max variable. I'm gonna hit enter on the numpad to put that in. And we can see that now our slider is 36.83. And if we go ahead and look at our both channels slider, at this highest value, we can see that it is 36.83. So that confirms that our expression is finding the maximum value of all the keyframes on this slider. So let me just quickly go through how this expression works. It's basically saying that for as many keyframes as exist on this slider, the loop will compare the current value of our source max variable to the value of the current keyframe, take the one that has the larger value and set our source max variable to that. And by doing that through all the keyframes, this source max variable will eventually equal the keyframe with the highest value. So now that we've found this number, we have enough information to write an expression on our scale to finish our animation. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide this expression and then hit Shift S to bring up the scale property. And then under the audio amplitude, I'm gonna bring up this both channels slider so that when we make this expression, everything is easily accessible. So I'm gonna alt click on the stopwatch of the scale property where we're gonna make all this magic happen. And I'm gonna create a variable called vol for volume. Say equals and pick whip the both channels slider, our waveform information. And then another variable on a new line called max vol say equals, and then we're gonna pick whip to that max vol slider that we just did the calculation on previously. And then I'm gonna create one more keyframe, call it S, and then I'm gonna write a linear expression which puts everything together. Linear, the input is gonna be our vol variable which contains our waveform keyframe data. And the range will be from zero to max vol. And then as this goes from zero to maximum volume, we want the scale to go from 100 to 150. And lastly, we just need to put this together as an array of values so the scale property can read it correctly and then hit enter on the numpad and we can already see what's happening as this waveform is getting bigger and smaller. So too is the scale that is controlling these speakers. So the last thing I want to do is mostly for convenience. If you remember, we created these S min and S max sliders. I'm going to set this first one to 100 and the second one to 150. And then I'm going to create two more variables here, one called S min. I'm going to pick whip that to the S min slider, for scale minimum, and then a scale maximum or S max variable. I'm going to pick whip to the S max slider. And then instead of 100 and 150, I'm gonna put those variables. So now to change this animation, we don't have to dig into this expression and manually input new numbers. We can just change the values of these sliders. 
All right, so there is one thing about this animation that's bothering me, and it's how not smooth it is. Let's take a look one more time. Okay, if we look at the graph editor of the slider that has our waveform, our audio waveform data, you can see that there is no easing. Every single frame has a new linear keyframe, and sometimes the difference between these frame to frame is quite steep. Fortunately, there is an expression that will average out these values a little bit and smooth out this graph, and that is the smooth expression. Type smooth, open parentheses. After Effects is gonna be looking for two parameters. The first is how far forward and backward in time should After Effects look for creating this average. And I'm gonna put in 0.1 seconds. The next is how many keyframes should it look at to create an average? I'm gonna put 24, semicolon. And now we can't quite see what's happening. We need to turn on the post expression graph. And now you can see if I turn on and off this graph, that in fact, these values have become more smooth. And if we go ahead and play this, you'll see that the animation is now more smooth. So looking one more time at this original animation, there is more going on than just the scale of the speakers reacting to the music. Like there's a radio blur on the boombox in the background. These zigzag accent circles are uh, fading in and out and getting bigger and smaller, but everything that's animating is using the exact same principle of finding the maximum value of the volume keyframes and converting that using the linear expression to the property that's being animated. All right, guys, so that is the whole tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. Um, if you can think of any other ways to use these techniques, be sure to leave them in the comments so other people can benefit. And aside from that, be sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and have a good day. All right, thanks.